Hey everybody, um, I'm here with my sort of usual Friday update and um, I just want to do a little bit of a, a hobby table update as well as um, a couple of just sort of little tips and things that I've um, been recently doing that I haven't really done in the past I thought you might find interesting as far as painting um, <clears throat> and modeling and then as well I just wanted to have it's not going to be a rant but it's just sort of a little bit of a codex discussion, uh, release discussion from GW, and then an update on what I'm going to be doing next. And so, um, what I've got here in front of you is um, the, these are actually done up as wraith blades right now. And so, um, sorry, let me just adjust my camera here a little bit. Um, so, I basically um, I magnetized the arms, and so they're basically um, able to just easily be put in here. Um, one of the things I elected not to do is magnetize at the wrists for the wraith blades. Now, what that'll do is it'll prevent me from using them as um, power axes and, uh, and uh, the shimmer shield. The reason I did that is, I think I mentioned in another video that, like as much as I like to magnetize for the purposes of getting maximum utility out of your models and gaming, um, in general I don't really like to magnetize that much and I don't really like carrying around a lot of bits, you know, like out separate from the model, like all magnetized and, or just like a whole bunch of, like a bag of arms or this or that. and. I just um, <clears throat> decided that um, I've always wanted to use these guys when I do use them as brace wraith blades just with the sword, so I've just glued the um, the swords onto the arms and that's the way they're going to be. Um, and so I was pretty happy with some of the posability. The models are actually quite nice and I'm going to show just for a, in a moment a comparison to the old models because when these came out there may have been some videos where they compared the two. I don't remember a whole lot, and I actually did a quick look back, and I didn't actually see any, but it's they're actually strikingly different from uh, the old metal models, and I don't mean just in posability and things, but actually the size is actually quite different. But before I go on to that, um, I may end up, I, I'm definitely going to be doing these, since I did magnetize them in the shoulder, um, Wraith Cannon, so they can be used with my other 10 Wraith Guard um, that have Wraith Cannon, there are no D-Scythes. I'm going to look into potentially doing the D-Scythes. I think to do that, I will have to magnetize at the wrist, um, and uh, I'll just have to look at that and just determine whether I want to. I mean, really, what I the two loadouts that I kind of wanted for these guys were the swords and, and the the old wraith cannons. Um, I'm not really that particular. Now, there is a choice when doing these to either do them as um, Wraith Blades or Wraith Guard, and now as you can see, I forgot to mention, I didn't put any heads on because I'm just going to wait until I get the guns done and just then figure out how I want to glue a head on with the pose. Um, these are actually for the Wraith Blades, these little things that go on the forearms. I'm just going to do it like that. I'm not actually going to, um, you know, like, <clears throat> well I guess this arm will come off and then the, the Wraith Guard will actually won't won't have those, but I'm going to use the, the loincloth for the Wraith Guard, not the sort of shield thing that they have for Wraith Blades. So even if I use them as Wraith Blades, like the head and the, the cloth in the front are going to be um, as if they were Wraith Guard. Um, so they'll, they'll match those in the end. Um, yeah, so that, I guess there's a lot of different ways you could do it, and that's just the way I'm going to do it. I kind of like the poses that I, I have one guy that sort of swing from the left with both of his swords. I have one guy with his sort of swords up in a ready position. This guy's in a ready position, but he's a little bit more leaning in, like he's just getting ready to slice or something, or in defense. Um, I have this guy here who has actually, this guy I guess is the ultimate defense. He's got his two swords, so they cross in the front, um, which is kind of cool. And then I have a guy swinging from the left, opposite the other one. Now he's not a mirror image. He's actually kind of going a bit more horizontally. Um, you can move these a little bit too um, just because uh, they're magnetized but yeah so looking good. Um, much to my surprise the Wraith Guard are just tiny compared to the new one, the new ones and so I don't even know like I guess I don't really care too much how they look on the table but I guess I do. I always care how things look on the table. Um, 
but I'm at a, I guess I'm in a little bit of a dilemma as to whether this guy's taller, even stooping forward, he's taller. Um, they're significantly smaller than their than the new ones. And these are, mind you, even with the heads off. I think one way to look at it too is just the top of these little um, vestiges there. I think they'll be fine, I guess. I had this debate, because I really do like my white color schemes, my white and green, where the, the body's primarily white that I've been doing recently, like for my Wraith Knight. I thought maybe since I like that better that I'll just sort of um, uh, just hang it up and just start doing these guys in the white scheme. But the more I thought about it is, you know, I painted these guys a while ago. I can probably do a better job now. Um, I'm going to just emulate this scheme on these guys. I'm going to brighten these guys' heads up a bit because they're a little gray for me. I didn't really get to, to a, another la highlighting layer like I think I would today. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just going to, I'm going to go for the dark green and then the white head, and that's how all my Wraith Guard and Wraith Blades will be. Um, yeah. And so, I actually did like the choice. These guys have a bit of a ghostly look, I think, because it's sort of like um, a bit of a, a light green um, that they have on their dots. They might look white there, but it's really like a, more like a, a really, really light green. Um, and I think it looks kind of cool. Um, and so, I'm probably going to paint the gun a little differently this time. This looks a little too close to the body. I'm going to just make it something different um, for the new guys. But they'll, their main body and head will be the same, and so they'll be okay, I think, on the table. Um, I do like how all the, the dots are just sort of a light color um, on these guys. So um, I think for um, the tips part of this, a lot of this stuff is really simple stuff, but it's maybe stuff I either either haven't tried before or never tried. You may some of you may have noticed that when I showed my spirits here in the past, how this was bent. Now, I'm fully aware with fine cast and resin how you can with hot water. And you, you know when you get these models, you you prep them, you you wash them in soap, and then you put them in hot hot water and you straighten them out. Now for whatever reason, I did that, but this guy ended up with a banana spear afterwards. I mean, it, it either bent on its own or I never quite got it the way I wanted to. But then I had already painted it. I think these resin fine cast pieces bend in storage um, is my experience, and that's what happened to this guy because I had straightened it, but then it really bent. Um, and so I thought to myself, I don't know what to do once I've already painted something that's resin. Can I, I mean, I don't want to dunk it in hot water. Maybe I could. I mean, I do um, put enough varnish on these guys when I'm done. But I, the idea of actually putting this in really hot water after painting it was not, and like with the base and stuff, was not something I was looking forward to. I, I did a quick search on the internet, and I really didn't come up with much at all. It's to, like it's all about how to straighten resin when you first prepare it, never like after it's been painted. But I remembered hearing about someone that instead of using hot water used a hair dryer. And I thought, hmm, well I might as well try it. And so I, you know, those of you who've seen my channel, I actually don't use a hair dryer because I don't have anything to dry. Like it just takes, it's instantaneous. And so um, I went upstairs and borrowed my wife's hair dryer. And um, I just, I took it pretty conservatively. I sort of turned the model. I had it on high and I moved it. I had the hairdryer maybe about here. And I had turned, just sort of turned it around a bit. And at a certain point, I just started to see it actually move. It got soft. And then I just quickly moved it away and I just used my finger and I straightened it out. And um, it worked really, really good. And so really simple, nothing earth shattering. But for those of you you know, that may run into the same thing. If you're like me, and this sort of common solution isn't just apparent to you, it, it actually does work. So, I thought that was cool. Like I said in another video, this is like my favorite thing from 6th edition. I love these guys. And he goes uh, really well with these guys that are here. Um, by the way, a lot of people, I, I've been watching the Codex uh, reviews for the new Codex, and uh, everybody kind of a lot of people have talked about Spirit Mark being the same, but the thing that I believe is different is it used to be that you could choose one enemy um, model um, that I believe was in 12 inches of the Spirits here, and you could Spirit Mark him, and um, everybody could get basically, I believe it's twin-length against him. Um, 
thing is, is now it's anybody within 12 inches. It's not just one model you elect. They actually changed it. They made it a little bit better from what I remember looking at it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's from the quick glance. I remember seeing it. Uh, the other thing I started using, and <laughs> this is really basic, but I never used to use um, the, the Lamian Medium as a thinning agent. Um, I mean, I used to use water, I still do to a bit, and I used to always use this stuff, this um, Liquitex Matte Medium, and I use Liquitex Flow Aid diluted and by instructions as with water all the time, I still do. Sometimes I use this just in my airbrush with certain paints without anything else, just this Liquitex, particularly um, some of the Vallejo model paints. I use um, water mixed with this Liquitex Flow Aid according to the instructions and I find that it gives me the best thinning in an airbrush um, with certain paints. But I was finding that with this matte medium it's quite thick and like a lot of people put it in the airbrush and they dilute it down with this stuff. Um, they make a ratio of it and then I used to use it just with my brush too, just maybe a little bit of water, maybe not. And I was finding at times it just it's very thick and Somebody said once on a channel that all this was was this stuff, you know, and it may be that that's the case, that this is just acrylic um, uh, resin or whatever paint, you know, uh, medium. Um, but I have to say, never having used this stuff before, this stuff works really well on the brush. I, I don't use it in my airbrush, and I probably won't, because I think my water and... and uh, Flow aid work quite good in the airbrush because I, I want to get really thin. But when I want to get sort of somewhere in a medium consistency to thin, like I don't want to get airbrush thin, this this uh, Lamian medium is really really good, and I just started using it recently. Um, beyond that, um, it is expensive. I mean, compared to buying stuff like this in size, but to be honest, I still use so little of it that I think it's worth it. So. Don't know what you guys think. I, I think it's good stuff, though. Um, next up, as far as the channel, um, after I finish these guys, I am going to be, for those that are into more of the historical stuff I do, I'm going to be doing some finishing up my civilians for musket and tomahawks, which were the um, ladies and gentlemen on horseback and on foot. That I'm, I'm going to be doing those coming up soon. I've got um, some more... Um, 40k uh, space rains after that, but it, and and then I wanted to just have just a sorry there a little quick discussion.